Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Enjoying this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway. The people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. It's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 72. We got a very special uh, pair of episodes actually coming up, and we'll tell you why that is in a moment here. But with me is my compatriot. He survived the floods, uh, Elimination Chamber, and in his own show uh, that he <laughs> participated in. Uh, he's a co- commentator down there with Inspire Pro Wrestling in Texas, uh, currently in Corpus Christi, where I think there was a cage or something, I understand. He's Eamon, at Eamon 2 please on the Twitters. How you doing, sir? I am I am good. It has been a long, long weekend, Sir Patron, so I am ready to talk about indie wrestling. Uh, fun weekend, though, but uh, we'll get into some of that uh, later on. Certainly, obviously. certainly. We'll be talking first off with somebody you're uh, familiar with, but before we get into that, uh, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. Check out this and so much more at the WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, we have this, and we're talking about all kinds of wrestling, especially so many things happening on Wednesday night is a, is the big story uh, lately, of course. Um, but uh, you can uh, also follow us at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook and Google+. Plus. Uh, join us live. Uh, generally, the wrestling starts at 9 p.m. Eastern Time at uh, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Every Tuesday, you can join us in the chat room there, ask questions of our guests, or let us know what indie wrestling you're into. And of course, follow uh, follow the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, subscribe to us on on YouTube, on iTunes, mm-hmm. Spreaker, iHeartRadio, wherever you can find us. So just do a Google search, audio, video, whichever way you would like to consume this show so uh we have a special pair of shows we're going to be stacking up the guests here uh thank you justin Plummer, for the iwc who should be joining us here in a little bit uh super indie is coming up here on june 13th and why not just just talk to as many people as we can from the tournament we've talked to so many including the super indie champion entering that tournament andrew palace here on this show and, and so many people was like super hentai we've talked about back on the wrestling mayhem show but i'm a uh, uh, real happy to have Back on this show, uh, he, he, we we had him years ago. Back when he was up here, uh, uh, suplex in uh, uh, Samoa Joe in, in, in an IWC ring. He is Ray Death Row, currently coming to us from Texas. Uh, he has relocated, and then great to see that you're doing awesome, awesome things down there. How you doing, Ray? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. So first of all, like I said, I, I saw you coming up uh, uh, up here as a, a part of the Cleveland Mafia. We talked about when you were on all those ages ago about uh, being in Pittsburgh and, and gaining the respect of people, uh, 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 being wearing the Browns colors <laughs> had to been tough. Uh, but you've been in Texas, and Eamon's very familiar with what you've been doing. Uh, how has that transition been for you? Uh, coming to Texas has been the best thing for me, both uh, for my life and my career. Uh, it's really opened up a lot of doors for me that, uh, I didn't think it would, um, you know, just, just the people I've met and, uh, you know, the friends I've made have been awesome. Uh, the crowds have, have instantly taken to me, you know, the, the preparation I had up North, um, you know, brought a style with me down to Texas that not many people are familiar with down here. Mm -hmm. So I hit, I hit the Texas indie scene like a hurricane. Um, you know, they instantly wanted to see me against the top guys in Texas and the top guys in the region. Um, and, uh, you know, I was, I was on a roll for a while. Um, you know, had a, I'm sure you guys heard, had a, had a little bit of a bump in the road last year. Uh, and, and, um, you know, but I'm, I'm back on track and, and, and running people over. Um, so there we are. Awesome. And I know you've had some other, uh, familiar faces come and join. I know John McChesney did a tour down there a little bit. Yeah, uh, John McChesney's come down, um, and somebody that you guys are very, very familiar with. Uh, John McChesney's actually done two tours down here. He's wrestled in NWA Houston, uh, which is uh, a company that I'm very familiar with. It's now uh, part of, it's left the NWA, it's now in Lone Star Championship Wrestling. And uh, he's wrestled at Branded Outlaw Wrestling, which is uh, um, kind of my, one, one of the two home promotions that I have down here, both Inspire Pro um, you know, branded outlaw are very, very close to my heart as well as uh, Lone Star. Um, but there's another guy that you're really familiar with in Shane Taylor, yes. who moved down here, who followed me down here, moved down here, um, uh, last December. And he kind of has the same experience that I have. He's been steamrolling everyone. Mm-hmm. 
uh, that he gets in the ring with down here. So and he's a guy. Last I saw him, uh, is, you know, I've been working with the RWA up here, and he was uh, really on top again, just destroying people. Uh, the biggest monster I had seen in a long time in this area, and as that's really kind of carried over down there in Texas. Oh, absolutely. He actually um, has been on the last three Ring of Honor shows that uh, that nice. came through Texas as nice. well. And, uh, you know, he did some some dark match tryout work for uh, for WWE as they came through. But uh, I think he may have struck gold because there's a uh, Eamon will tell you. And I don't know if you're familiar with the name because because of Eamon. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Keith Lee, who mm -hmm. is a Texas guy. Uh, you know, he he is six foot three, 330 pounds. I said he was 350. He got really upset with me. Uh, so I think he's about 330 pounds, but he and Shane Taylor have recently formed a tag team. Uh, and for anybody that's not familiar, Shane Taylor is six, one, three, set, uh, 350, 360. Uh, he was an all American, uh, wrestler in college. Uh, Keith Lee, I think played semi-pro football. Um, I mean, they, these are two massive, massively strong, massively fast, massively powerful individuals. They formed a tag team and debuted in Ring of Honor over this week past weekend in Amarillo, Texas. Oh, uh they're calling themselves the, they're calling themselves the Pretty Boy Killers. Uh and they absolutely murdered people Friday night in Amarillo and Saturday night in Oklahoma City. Oh, uh I expect to start seeing them tag together in Texas and then uh, more stuff with Ring of Honor and whoever is smart will sign that team immediately. They're not under contract with anybody yet, but it won't take long. I mean, those guys, like, seeing them together in the ring is like a force of nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it? Hopefully, I was going to say, hopefully maybe one day down the line, if, you know, this Ring of Honor streak continues, we may get them against uh, you and Hanson one day. Uh, you know, I've never been one to back down from a fight. Uh, I'm not going to start anytime soon. You line them up, and uh, mm -hmm. I'll throw them on their head and punch them in the mouth. We actually pulled up a match here uh, while you're talking about him uh, from Lone Star Wrestling. And, yeah, he, he definitely uh, uh, dwarfs you a little bit in, in the ring there. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, feel, I don't feel like a, a small person next to most people. No. But, but, but Keith and Shane and, uh, you know, my best friend Jax Dane down here, all three of them are, are monstrous individuals. So uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting being the little guy of the group. <laughs> You're the little buddy for a change, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, you know, it's it's kind of uh, kind of motivating. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, uh, you know, uh, others. Well, actually, Inspire Pro is another one we talk about a lot. What's going on there? Obviously, with Eamon here on the show. Um, how has that been? It, it seems like a promotion that's really kind of caught fire over the last few years, uh, at least from a distance that I can tell. Uh, it, wh what do you what do you account for that and in, in your involvement in that? Um, I mean, Inspire Pro is, is like a couple other um, Texas companies down here, um, but, but they've kind of caught lightning in a bottle with what they're doing as far as with their talent and with their crowds. Uh, they're, they, they, they have this really cool venue in Austin. Um, you know, their crowds they have, they pack the house every time. I think the last two or three events were standing room only. Uh, I mean, and literally standing room only. Their, their fans lined up two or three people deep along the walls behind the chairs. I mean, there's no seats left in the building. Um, they were stealing seats from the lobby, from the other, from the other venues in the, in the same building and bringing them into it, uh, to see, to see inspire. And there still wasn't enough people. The people are rabid about the events, uh, which just makes all of the wrestlers, you know, who are already passionate and already throw it all on the line. But if you get a really crazy rabid crowd, uh, that just brings everybody's intensity level up even that much higher. Uh, so I think that's something that's kind of special. You know what I mean? When you get a crowd, like uh, when you watch WWE shows or, you know, that's a big part of the magic behind Ring of Honor, the crowds are so dedicated, so crazy um, that that just motivates us to go that much, to take it that much further. You know what I mean? To, to step, to fight that much harder. You know, people are going bonkers out of their seats and all of a sudden we find a little extra gear we didn't know we had. Um, you know, we thought we were we were redlining before, but man, that, that you feed off that energy. Like that's, uh, that's a real thing. And, and anybody who's never been in the middle of that ring doesn't really understand that, mm -hmm. but, uh, it's, it's a real, real thing. It looks like we're again looking at a match of you with uh, Chris Hero, uh, which I think is a bona fide uh, a dream match for a lot of indie, indie watchers out there. Um, and, and it seems like I, I, I see those kinds of matches happening all the time uh, uh, in that Fed. And then people coming up, it seems like they're making are really, really impressive. 
Yeah, man. They, uh, you know, they bring in, they bring in a lot of guys that, that aren't necessarily local to Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and they've got, and they've got guys like, like me who, and, uh, ACH who are ring of honor guys who just happen to be from Texas. So it's kind of this nice meld of, of, of local Texas guys where there's a lot of talent that's, that doesn't get enough recognition uh, nationwide. And then, um, you know, some super indie guys that came in. Fun fact about that Chris Hero match, uh, I actually wrestled that match with two broken ribs. Uh, I had broke them the night before at Ring of Honor, and uh, I, was, I was texting – um, or in contact with the promoters at Inspire and said uh, earlier in the day, I said, I don't think I'll be able to wrestle. I couldn't even get out of my car, out of the seat in the car. Um, but uh, I, you know, I, I, I found a way through it. And Chris here, Chris and I went out and, and, and absolutely killed each other. Wow. And, and of course, um, oh, go ahead, uh, Eamon. No, I was just going to say definitely. And I think your, your run in Inspire Pro especially has been really, really spectacular. Uh, this past weekend, uh, of all things, uh, I think your match with uh, Ricky Starks really stood out as one of the best of that night. Uh, uh, when that definitely comes out on DVD, I encourage uh, uh, people to check that out. And I know uh, uh, next month uh, you'll be going one-on-one with uh, uh, the American psycho Lance Hoyt. So I'm sure that's going to be uh, uh, just as hard hitting. Uh, I, you know, all respect to Ricky Starks. Ricky Starks is, is, is absolute dynamite and he is, he is gold. Uh, but all respect to him. Uh, there's no way on earth that he hits as hard as Lance Hoyt does. Um, so that match is going to be 10 times as hard hitting as anything that Ricky and I did. Um, because Lance is worldwide known for being a tough a tough son you know a tough customer and uh you know and 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 he and i both kind of uh adhere to that smash mouth style of wrestling where we're going to line up and uh throw everything we have at, at the other guy so and this is actually kind of a dream match for me because i've never wrestled lance one-on-one i've wrestled you know hansen and i uh war machine took on killer elite squad recently at ring of honor and uh you know and i've i've mixed it up with 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 lance in uh you know, a couple, like a three-way and, you know, a couple other tag team matches, um, but never a one-on-one encounter. So this is, uh, this is going to be really exciting for me. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned Ring of Honor, and actually we kind of borrowed the graphic for uh, the great Destination America premiere this week uh, for you. Um, yeah, man. Really cool to see friends of the show like you, Dalton Castle, of course, making waves up here at IWC recently um, on, on, on the Ring of Honor graphics uh, uh, for this new announcement. Uh, well, for, first, uh, how has that been uh, kind of getting – I know you popped up here a couple times uh, in, in Pittsburgh, and I was like, oh, hey, I remember that guy. And, uh, and, and I'm here and down in San Antonio, and all of a sudden we, we see you uh, kind of in a pretty serious tag team on our TVs. Uh, how did that develop, and, and how is it working with Hanson there? And, 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 uh, and are you in competition for beards? <laughs> uh, well, uh, the competition is, is twofold. His is definitely a larger beard, while mine is is definitely a prettier beard. Uh, it's, it's definitely <laughs> I, I've got the better shape. He's got the you know the better size overall. Um, but he, uh, you know, uh, Ring of Honor has always been where I wanted to wrestle. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, since I, you know, since early in my career, people said that, you know, Ring of Honor was, you know, I was tailor made for Ring of Honor. I I, I need to go to Ring of Honor. And, um, I agree, you know, it it was something that was always a goal of mine. And in, uh, 2013 in June, they were coming to do their first show in San Antonio. And, um, you know, uh, the, the, the promoters got a hold of me, um, and, I actually talked to, to a guy, you know, uh, one of one of the guys that uh, uh, that puts matches together, um, you know, had, I've known him forever, and he got a hold of me and said, "Hey, man, you're still wrestling?" And I'm and I said, uh, "Yeah, I've I've just been down and I just moved to Texas. I didn't retire, but that you know that goes to show you that, that a lot of a lot of the good stuff that happens in Texas just doesn't make the national, uh, you know, wrestling websites or anything like that. So they kind of didn't know where I was." Um, and I came in to wrestle Bobby fish in June of 2013. And when I walked through the doors, people who I had known for 10 years just did a double take because I looked like a different person. I had rededicated myself to training. Uh, I'd always trained really, really hard and I always had a reputation. I mean, um, Sorg, you can, you can, you can back me up on this. I've always had the reputation of being an insanely strong person, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and throw and throwing anybody at any time from anywhere. However, I didn't, I never had that, you know, that, that commanding presence, that superhero look that, uh, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the guys and a lot of the TV products you, you need. Well, right. 
I, I had dedicated myself to, to training and dieting and doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I walked, when I walked in, I, I think my look turned some heads, you know, it, it looked like, uh, I was a different person and, um, you know, me and Bobby went out and killed each other. Like, you know, guys like me and him will do, we had a really good match. And then that led to another match. I wrestled Michael Elgin a couple months later, and then I wrestled Roderick strong. And then, uh, they asked, you know, they asked me to be part of the, the top prospect tournament. And Hanson and I ended up in the finals of the top, top prospect tournament. We beat the tar out of each other. If you're noticing a trend, that uh, seems to be how mo most of my matches go. They're not very pretty, but, uh, you know, we, we beat the hell out of each other. Um, and then, you know, we formed uh, War Machine shortly after. We, we kind of both liked each other's style and, uh, you know, the, the looks fit and the style fit and the philosophies fit. And uh, we saw it, it seemed to catch lightning in a bottle um, until my motorcycle wreck that almost killed me. Uh, so I was out for six months after that and Hanson kept, you know, he kept on a roll and he did some really good things as a single. Uh, I came back and, um, you know, right, right from the, the very first time I stepped back in the ring, uh, you know, he and I hadn't lost any chemistry and, uh, I'm what, what's probably scary to people is I've always been an intense guy. I've always been very aggressive in the ring. Uh, since I've been back from my accident, uh, I think that's been taken up several notches. Uh, and Lance Hoyt was actually a guy who told me that specifically. He said, man, you've always been, been one of the most intense people I've ever met, but whatever, whatever you went through with, with your accident and your recovery has changed something in you and, and, and you're downright scary now. Um, you know, so I brought that to ring of honor with Hanson and, and we've been murdering people, uh, you know, and we've been moving up the card. So we're, uh, we're just on a roll right now and trying to, trying to really, really, um, continue that. So, you know, we're, we're, we're both full time with ring of honor and, you know, this is where we want to be. So we're going to make the most of it and run as hard as we can. Awesome. How, how much has it helped, uh, getting a chance to get a word in edgewise without J rock with you? <laughs> I, I, I pulled up. You know, I pulled up some old Cleveland Mafia footage during that last talk because you're talking about your old look here uh, in IWC, one of your classic three ways with against uh, uh, Prohibition, Matt Cross, and the Gambinos here. And, I, and I'm just remembering J Rock, and, uh, and and he's a talker. Man, I, you know he 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 is definitely a talker. He's a guy that if you call him on the phone, you need to set aside 45 minutes to talk to him. Oh, we um, yeah yeah but, we we had him for about a half an hour letting us know what he thought of Jake the Snake one time on the show. And I don't think we talked. Yeah. I think we let him go. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, and, but the problem is he's money when he talks. Oh, so yeah. you don't really even want to, you don't even really want to interrupt him. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I learned, I learned so much from, from J-Rock when, uh, when we tag team, when we team together. Um, so, you know, I mean, that experience really helped me as a tag team wrestler, changed the way I looked at tag team wrestler. Cause before that I was really prim primarily a singles wrestler and only wanted to be a singles wrestler. Um, and I kind of fell in love with tag team wrestling through working with J-Rock. So, you know, a lot of my later success with the Path of Resistance with Jack Stain and with uh, War Machine with Hanson, I, I owe directly to J-Rock. Um, you know, and to be completely honest, I'm not really that big of a talker. So I, I would prefer, much prefer to do, you know, you don't really see me cutting a lot of promos. You don't really see me, even when I do cut promos, it's pretty much short, sweet, and to the point. Um, you know, I, I rarely have much to say. I'd much prefer to, you know, do my as 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 cheesy as it is do my talking in the ring you know come on out and uh, line up in front of me and we'll see we'll see what you really have to say uh because you can say anything you want but uh you if you want to back it up you got to do it you got to do it in the ring where it counts that's right uh we mentioned a little bit before i get to super into here uh, though we definitely want to uh so so ring of honor the big announcements you guys are going to be on wednesday nights uh, uh preceding actually tna uh, impact wrestling another iwc favorite uh djz on that show as well uh but uh, yep. uh how, how is that uh kind of you know being being a part of something the ring of honor that's already got quasi national syndication i know there's a lot of markets that was kind of missing but now really filling in the gaps and and in prime time even on a uh, on a cable network here uh, I'm I'm sorry. It's 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 just awesome. Like uh, you know, for us, it's an opportunity to showcase ourselves in a way that you know on a platform that we've never had. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is you know uh, for all intents and purposes prime time national TV. You know, it's 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 a major cable network that's carried in. I, I don't know. I think they said 57 million homes or 67 million homes, something like that. Whereas, you know, the Sinclair broadcasting, uh, we're, which we're staying on, we're not, we're not losing all of those syndicated shows. We're, we're just adding, um, showing, you know, we're adding the show on, uh, 
on Destination America. So you you can if you if you watch on the syndicated shows, you can you can see that that show first on the syndicated shows. And then you can see, and then we'll just, we're, we're playing that show as well on Wednesday on that De- uh, destination America. So this is still the same show that we're, that we're um, producing for Sinclair broadcasting. We're just, we're just additionally airing it on destination America. So for us, this just bronze our, our footprint in a, in a way that uh, I don't think a lot of people expected or dreamed that would be possible uh, at this point in ring of honors career. So this is a huge step up in exposure. It's a huge step up in, in, in reach, um, you know, and it's going to bring with it everything, you know, all that attention, all that, uh, all that spotlight. And, and really, you know, I, I really think that we can open a lot of eyes and really, really open some doors for uh, possibilities that, that we're not even seeing yet. Mm-hmm. And I know even locally here in Pittsburgh, I, I talked with somebody at the, the, my Pittsburgh channel, uh, the, my PG, my, well, my network, I guess is the general, network uh, uh, out there but uh but it, like even locally on that side they're very happy with the numbers uh the show has been doing well at least in this market and and seeing this expansion is, is pretty good um and it's it's really interesting I, i'm glad to see that the show has has really kind of found its voice uh you know after a while after the change from uh, uh hd nets version of it and uh it's, it's become a really it, it, i'm hearing word that after this uh, with viewership and everything ring of honor may officially become the number two promotion uh after. yeah i don't see i don't see there's any reason why that that can't happen and depending on who you talk to you know what i mean it depends on how you measure it and mm-hmm. and all that fun stuff mm-hmm. but you know i firmly believe that it's the best wrestling on the planet Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have the numbers or the dollars that some of the other companies do, but uh, go ahead and stack our cards up line, uh, you know, match for match against any company on the on the planet, and uh, you're going to come up in favor of Ring of Honor every single time. Certainly, certainly. Well, the big thing uh, coming up next week, uh, July 13th, as we mentioned, Super Indy 14, uh, one of the longest running tournaments here, uh, and, and big names. Uh, the, the 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 list of people. Uh, that have been uh, in this is a who's who of wrestling, uh, you know, from AJ Styles and CM Punk to to uh, you with Ray, Ray Rowe <laughs> this year, uh, of course. Well, now, now you now this is interesting. So you have actually never competed, I understand, for the Super Indie title, let alone the tournament. Is that right? Uh, yeah, this is actually my first opportunity in any facet of the Super Indie uh, title. Uh, I've never been in the tournament, and I've never held that. Um, held that belt or even competed for the belt. Uh, I've held the IWC heavyweight belt. I've held the tag team titles, but I've never, uh, never been in a matchup for the uh, super indie titles. So this is a really big thing. I mean, I could be a triple crown winner, uh, as of Saturday night. So, you know, and I, I, I've recently had success in Cleveland at AIW where, uh, I swept the table at the JT lightning in- invitational tournament. Uh, you know, I went four and oh over, over two days. So, uh, I've been a tournament wrestler my whole life, uh, you know, with amateur wrestling, excuse me, amateur wrestling and, and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm used to wrestling multiple times in a day. Uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunity. You know, I, I think this is something that uh, this is a talent that I have that a lot of guys don't have. It's not normal for them to compete more than once in a day. But my entire amateur career was spent in tournaments. Mm-hmm. So this is something is this is a facet that I'm very, very, very comfortable with. And, uh, you know, I, I get better as time goes on. As more people get tired, I get stronger. So it works out for me. Uh, and, of course, uh, looking at the playing field here, uh, it looks like uh, your, your first round is going to begin uh, against Joe Rosa, of course, uh, making waves here over the last year, the VIP. Uh, what do you think about your competition kind of shaping, shaping up? And is there anybody else from the tournament that you're hopefully looking forward to face or you know, think may also stick out uh, in this tournament? Um, a guy that I would like to wrestle, um, you know, I'll talk about Rosa in a second because we're for sure going to wrestle him. Uh, a guy that I would really like to wrestle is Cedric Alexander. Um, he and I, you know, obviously know each other from Ring of Honor. We've never been in the ring together. Uh, so I'm really uh, hoping that maybe the brackets line up that way. You know, an Alexander Real Finals would be fun. I don't know how the, the brackets look lined up. Um, so I don't know if it'd be first round, second round, third round, whatever. Um, but I, I'd, I'd like to see that matchup. Um, you know, other than that, uh, I'd, I'd love to, uh, I've known, uh, super anti for, you know, my entire career, literally my entire career. Um, so any chance to get in the ring with him is, is a good, you know, good hard fought battle. I'd, I'd love to, love to, love to, to cross swords with, with hentai again. Um, anybody else, man, it's, it's, it's a luck of the draw, you know, whoever, wherever the cards shake out, that's, uh, that's who I want to fight. Um, Joe Rosa, I've known since the very first day he stepped in a wrestling ring. 
Um, you know, I, uh, I knew him when he was first starting in Firestorm Pro in Cleveland back, you know, back before I moved to Texas. Um, he's a kid that uh, I saw a lot of potential in and uh, seems like he's been making some waves uh, since I've been gone, uh, especially over the last 18 months. So, you know, uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, if he's the same, you know, the same Joe Rosa that I that I knew four or five years ago, or if he's got more stuff up his sleeve and, uh, you know, he knows exactly who I am and, um, it'll be fun. It'll, uh, it'll kind of be a throwback to, uh, you know, four or five years ago, uh, back in Cleveland, but, uh, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to the opportunity. You know, I want to see, I want to see what he's got. You know, people are talking about him. People are, you know, there's a little buzz about him, man. Uh, that, that, that just amps me up. So I want to, I want to see what he's got. Awesome. Uh, so uh, since we haven't had you on this show, we have a, a little bit of a, a, a few standard questions we like to end off with. Well, first of all, what are you watching? I guess you're watching Ring of Honor, right? But is anything else kind of getting your attention out there? Uh, as far as wrestling? Yeah. Uh, I try to watch as much New Japan pro wrestling as I can. Nice. Um, New Japan is, over the last couple of years, have absolutely been killing it. Uh, I mean, they, they just have, like, uh, you know, between New Japan and Ring of Honor, they have the best wrestlers on the planet. Um, you know, and and it's evidenced by the guys who have left those two companies and what they've done done in WWE. You know, and how quickly they've some of those guys have risen. You know, over the last five six years, uh, some of the biggest hottest names in WWE have been alumni from New Japan and rest and uh, Ring of Honor. Uh, so I've been watching that primarily. Um, you know, I, I, I watch a lot of uh, older stuff as well. Um, you know, I love I love classics like uh, like Stan Hansen. I'm a huge fan of the Road Warriors and the Steiner Brothers. Um, so, you know, I, I, I try to kind of stay versatile, you know, see what's out there now, but uh, also watch uh, what, you know, make sure I'm grounded in the past and watch some stuff like that. Awesome, awesome. So, and the other thing we like to ask is uh, – What's the best and the worst thing about uh, uh, doing indie wrestling all, all these years? Um, the best thing about it is, you know, the people that I've met through throughout the years. Uh, you know, I've met definitely the closest friends, um, you know, guys that I legitimately consider my family now, um, you know, just as just as much as any as any blood relations uh, through wrestling. And I wouldn't have met these guys without indie wrestling. Um, you know, uh, Shane Taylor, Jax Dane, um, you know, just to name two right off the top of my head. Uh, and, and, you know, and, the, and that list is, man, it, you know, John McChesney, J-Rock, guys like that who just, they've changed my life in so many ways. Uh, so that's definitely unquestionably the best thing about it. You know, the, 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 the friendships you, you make and, you know, the brotherhood you experience uh, when, it, when it's done right, it's just, it, you can't beat it. The worst thing, I think... Worst thing is twofold. The worst thing, first off, is um, time away from family. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many birthdays, weddings, uh, special dinners, you know, um, graduations, all that stuff that I've missed um, and will continue to miss as I do this more and more and more. Um, you know, because wrestling is all that I do now. I, I'm gone. I'm on the road every single weekend. Uh, so if there's any family event over the weekend, I'm, I, I, can't, I can't be there. Um, because if I don't wrestle, I don't eat, you know, this is how I support myself. This is how I pay all my bills this is how I make my living. Uh, you know, and I'm literally living my dream. So it's, it's, that is the best and worst thing about wrestling is that I'm gone and I get to travel and I get to see and do all these amazing things, but I get to, I have to sacrifice time with loved ones, uh, as, as a result of that. Um, however, the other, the other worst thing about indie wrestling is the fact that our business over the last 10 years has become polluted by people who have no business in the wrestling ring. Guys who should have stayed in the, in the stands, guys who should have stayed, you know, behind the keyboards at their, at, at the computer in their mom's basement are now able to buy a pair of boots and get into wrestling rings because promoters, a lot of promoters across the country will use anybody. It says, Hey, my name is Billy Bob. I'm a wrestler. Um, and as proud as I am, and as much as I love professional wrestling, I hate that aspect of, of the Indies. Um, there's no governing body. There's no qualifications. Anybody 
it seems like can buy a pair of boots or you know uh go to hot topic and get some get some uh get some half ass gear and get booked on shows and that takes it does two things it takes jobs from guys like me who are trying to do this to support to support ourselves you know professionals who are traveling who are on tv who have a contract and who are who are traveling uh to to support myself and, and our families that takes money away because it, and it lessens uh, it lessens the ability to make money in this business because if guys will wrestle for hot dogs, why would a promoter pay for legitimate talent? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the other thing it does is that, um, you know, I meet people and as proud as I am of wrestling, the first thing that comes out of my mouth is not usually when I meet someone, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm Ray, I'm a professional wrestler. I just introduce myself and that's, that's all there is. Um, you know, and it's not till either later in the conversation or somebody else brings it up that, that wrestling comes up because invariably there's one of these backyard, barely out of the backyard guys. Oh, Hey, my cousin, you know, my cousin, Billy Joe does that. I said, no, nah, whatever your cousin, Billy Joe does it. It's not what I do. Um, you know, I, I, I'm a, I'm a professional wrestler. I get paid for this. This is all I do. You know, when was the last time you saw Billy Joe on TV? When was the last time he took a plane to to go to a show? You know, um, that's not to say that there aren't great independent guys, truly independent guys that aren't on TV, that aren't aren't flying. But come on now, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. if if you look like if if the if the guy in the third row thinks he can beat you up, or you know you look like you couldn't wrestle your way out of a wet paper bag, hang them up, go back in the seats. Uh, you can do more to love the business by buying a ticket and supporting real wrestlers. Awesome. Sorry. Awesome. And, and, end of, end of rant. It's definitely something that I get. <laughs> no, definitely, about, definitely. So uh, I apologize about that. It's not a problem. <laughs> not a problem. Was there a good in there? I'm sorry. I was, I was trying to help somebody find the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, actually we do uh, real quick. Uh, uh, our, our guest has to go, but, uh, uh, put your, put the headphones on and, and, and snuggle up to that mic there. Uh, the promoter for, uh, IWC, Justin Plummer, just, uh, just arrived. Oh my God. Just in the back. You were, At least 15 minutes. You were in the backyard of my neighbors? I told you I was they in the house They have a dog. Pond. That's not right. Yeah, well, they don't anymore. <laughs> oh. uh, Plumber, we're on the line with Ray Rowe right now, and uh, he's got to go here in a, in a minute. Uh, do you have any quick questions for him uh, uh, pertaining to the Super Indy coming uh, up? I don't want to repeat anything you guys did. I just want to say, um, Ray, thanks for coming out. I know all the fans are super, super excited. Social media is a buzz. Uh, surprisingly, am I am I close enough to this Yeah, you're thing? good. You're all right. You're all right. Uh, Surprisingly, he was a last-minute ad. I, I had the bracket ready to go, and I'm thinking it's just missing something special, maybe a little bit of Ray Row, and there will do the trick. And wanted to change the the cruiserweight persona that the Super Indy title has taken upon itself, and uh, really get somebody in the mix. So I hope you're ready to go. I know you got the size advantage, and just want to let you know I'm pulling for you. Thank you, brother. Uh, I, I appreciate the ad. Um, you know, I, like I said, I've been. I've been in and around IWC. I know that I moved to Texas, so I'm not there as much as I can. But, uh, you know, I love coming to IWC. Every time I come to Pittsburgh, um, you know, I, I have people ask me, um, you know, when are you coming back to IWC? When are you coming back to IWC? Now I have an answer. You know, June 13th, Super Indy 14, come out and see me do what I do. Um, and, and you're absolutely right. There's there's a, a marked size difference between myself and most of the other competitors in the, uh, uh, in the tournament. So I'm – interested to see how that plays out awesome well, well thanks again ray Rowe. check him out uh, i don't know if you're on this are you do you know are you on this week's premiere episode of ring of honor on uh, destination america uh, i i am not on, i am not on this week okay. um i believe my i believe my episode uh uh we've we've filmed an episode that we'll we'll be airing in the next couple weeks i'm not sure if it's next week or the week after but uh, i know this week is uh the briscoes are in action and uh I think Moose is in action. I mean, this, this week is action packed from, um, you know, some of the guys from, from new Japan are in action. This is, uh, this is going to be a really, really, really good episode. So definitely, definitely check it out. I'll, I'll be watching. I highly encourage everybody else to be watching as well. Awesome. Go check it out. And, uh, where can people find you online? Uh, every, all of my social media is Raymond X row. So Twitter at Raymond X row, uh, Instagram at Raymond X row, Facebook backslash Raymond X row. Uh, I believe I've hit that 5,000, uh, friend follower or friend thing. So you're going to have to follow me on Facebook, but uh, I try to stay active, um, and, you know, really update all three pages. So, uh, you know, 
give me a shout out on 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 social media and uh you know i try to i try to interact with as many fans as i can so thank you guys for the support thanks for having me on and uh, i'll see you guys in a couple weeks Thanks, Ray. We'll see you in a couple weeks. And uh, like I said, Plumber's here. Uh, well, first, before we go, hey, hey, Plumber, thank you for joining us. This is Justin Plumber, the promoter for the IWC. The IWC. I'm finally here in studio after being on the show, what, two or three times now? <laughs> a, few, a few months in. I haven't seen the like the gray hairs start just yet. Yeah. Just after, for what, four shows just you know, or men. anything like that. Natural so. bars. <laughs> uh so he'll be helping us uh, uh give us some insight here uh maybe a little bit of this bracket insight here did you make these things did i make the bracket did you make the brackets did you did you are you the uh, is, is there post-it notes somewhere of all the names there's a yeah i have a screenshot of a napkin from permani brothers where the bracket was made. is that is that how it went down uh-huh Nice, nice. Yeah, that'll be posted. We, we printed it up a little bit now for the website. <laughs> Jesse work, worked his magic on that napkin, and, and that's what you see on <laughs> I Facebook I said, you see right this now. napkin? Make it pretty. He did it. Jesse's great. Jesse's the best at what he does. <laughs> best one, best one. All right, but we got another one here, another participant in the Super Indie. He's been making waves over the last few months. I think, what, since December? Is, is that right? Is that when you January. Did? January? Yes. Okay. Uh, in the IWC, uh, he's Dylan Bostick joining us here on the show. How you doing, man? Pretty good, pretty good. Haven't ate a carb since uh, yesterday morning, so I'm feeling a little, uh, a little tired. My brain's not really functioning, but you know, I'm here. Perfect, perfect time for an interview. We'll hit you with the hard hitting questions. That's what that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So, well, first of all, uh, for 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 newbies on the show, we like to kind of get a little bra- background. So, uh, what uh, what was the first point uh, that you were kind of exposed to wrestling and, and kind of grasp onto it. Like what was your kind of earliest memory of that? Actually, uh, my mom dated an indie, indie wrestler in, uh, Shelbyville, Indiana. His name is blade. And, um, she took me to a show when I was eight years old. And after that, like I started going to the shows with him and I started tearing down, helping set up. And, uh, I think at the age of 12, I had my first uh, my first day of wrestling training. Oh, wow! <laughs> Wait, so did you did you just bypass WWE fandom completely? Do what? Did you just bypass WWE fandom completely and just go straight for the indies then? Pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty much how it started. That's awesome. Um, so, so how did you come up? So, so I guess training you just kind of uh, uh, did it all through uh, high school, for, or I guess middle high school. Uh, yeah, up through. Yeah, actually, um, my favorite wrestler was Stone Cold Steve Austin, this Blade guy. He kind of portrayed the attitude of Stone Cold. Mm-hmm. And uh, whenever I went to that indie show, that was kind of what connected with me. Um, so, you know, I really connected with him pretty well. And, like, you know, I was obsessed with wrestling. And all throughout high school, you know, I was training and traveling. And I actually had my first match when I was 15, which uh, – this month it'll mark eight years in wrestling wow um but yeah even throughout all of high school like i was traveling the indies nice and i understand um uh, you're somebody that kind of uh, came into iwc with a bit of buzz i, I heard some people talking uh, about you because i'm like you know who is this guy i think I, I first saw you pop up with uh ray lynn over in rwa um and uh and, uh, and then heard you were popping up here in IWC and doing done so much uh, there since. But uh, I heard you did some time in uh, Ohio Valley Wrestling as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I was at OVW for about three years. Um, I trained with a hustler, Rip Rogers. Um, I worked I worked regularly regularly on TV for about two years. Uh, my first year there, I didn't really do too much. I was just like on house shows and dark matches and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, I had a lot of uh, a lot of good experiences at OVW. Good, good. I, I, I have to ask. Uh, I understand there's a Justin Bieber connection of some sort. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, there's like, literally um, thousands of Justin Bieber fans watching this right now. It could be. It could very well be. Um, I, I envy your Twitter yeah. numbers for one thing. Uh, <laughs> so, Twitter envy. It's like the new uh, thing out there. It is a little bit. Uh, yeah. That's powerful on the indies, right? So mm-hmm. explain to us, like, what what is this this Bieber connection? Well, uh, whenever I was down at OVW, um, one night at a TV taping, the crowd started chanting Justin Bieber at me. And I was like, all right, well, if 
you guys want to call me Justin Bieber, I'll give you Justin Bieber. So, like, the next week, I started coming out to Justin Bieber boyfriend. And, like, I started portraying Justin Bieber's character. So, anyway, like, I, I started, like, following him on Twitter. And then, like, I know, I'm like, dang, this dude has a lot of followers. And I didn't even know, but he was the most followed person in the world on Twitter. So, I'm like, dang, if I could have his followers, that'd be sweet. So, like, I started following, like, people that were, like, active on his accounts just because, you know, dedicated, loyal fans like that, that's what it's all about. So, I can make them dedicated, loyal fans for me then that's a perfect, you know, a perfect plan. Well, I followed his uh, brother and sister's mom, and she actually followed me back. And actually, she has a picture on her Instagram in my uh, Who Sucks Now t-shirt from Pro Wrestling Tees. And then um, the whole Justin Bieber thing kind of got a little bit of a buzz, and now he follows me because of it. So I literally gained hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, believers every day that follow me on twitter it's amazing <laughs> just just looking at the count here and uh, uh you are at uh let's see your your followers you have one hundred and eighty nine thousand thousand followers <laughs> which are also hopefully one hundred eighty nine thousand dvd and digital download buyers yeah that's right <laughs> at iwcwrestling.com that's the that's the that's the thing we got to turn these followers into money that's what i keep telling you <laughs> that's right that's Making right money. So, so are you, uh, does that make you Justin Bieber's favorite wrestler? Uh, I don't know, man. Like this whole thing with Seth Rollins right now. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? Of, <laughs> what do you think about that? Cause that's popped up the last few weeks. I don't even know why that even yeah. happens. I, I, I think Vince McMahon just discovered who Justin Bieber is. Yeah. Um, I think it was kind of funny that four days after I send them a, a tough enough video that they start using the Justin Bieber thing and then. Um, a couple other guys use the Who Sucks Now thing on SmackDown. I think that's pretty interesting. And I'm not going to take away from Dylan's airtime, but I think in, in previous conversations we've had, this is now the third time where something like this has happened with one of our guys. Yeah. Where it's just, uh, it, there's nothing you can do about it, but it's just a killer because it's like, take the guy, don't take the idea. Yeah, yeah. Because where yeah. the idea generates, this is the guy that's going to do it best. You can't, you can't, you know, put lipstick on a pig. Not yeah. to get political, but and, you know and, what it I mean? seems, and it seems it, it not not even just because a a, a Dylan's thing. It seems so awkward, you know, like when like when they said that like 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 uh 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 Daniel Bryan was a turd one week, you know, it's, it's just like <laughs> why are we? What, uh, I guess the kids will chant it. I, I, I sure, you know, but anyways, um, <laughs> from that mentioning uh, uh, uh tough enough, uh, uh there's a, there's something definitely where social media is coming in handy, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, my uh, YouTube video got over 81,000 views, which is pretty good. Please, please tell me you monetized that thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I didn't know how to do that until after it hit 81,000 oh, views. Oh, no. And, yeah. Let's leave yeah, money no. on the table. Sucks. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. It's confusing. Yeah. It took me forever to figure out how to do that. And then even once I did, I still don't know how to get the actual money. I get mad when I get 400 yeah. views and forgot to check the box. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, how we're, that's how we're running over here at the Wrestling Mayhem show. Um, but I know, and even you popped on TV. Uh, you know, how, How's that support been? Uh, uh, will we be, will be seeing you on TV here in a month? You know, anything's possible, but I will tell you this right now. I've had zero zero contact with WWE. Oh, so no. I don't think it's going to happen, but, <laughs> you know, we'll see. Anything's possible. Never say no. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, from there, like I say, you've been in IWC for a few months now um, with, um, and I've really kind of uh, uh, been a big fan. We're, we're big fans of Keith Hodd here on the show. He's been on the show for a while. He's been actually on our video game show as well. Um, and uh, you've been in a pretty uh, heavy feud with him here. Uh, but uh, I've always been impressed because, you know, on paper, this is something that I would have seen as kind of an undercard for, for an IWC show and be like, oh, you know, it's probably forgettable. We'll move on. But it, it, you guys have really kind of made something special here uh, with you and Hot and Raylan involved. Yeah, you know, um, I really... I really enjoyed the matches with uh, Keith Hott just because, you know, I got to pick on him and, mm -hmm. you know, people really got into that, um, throwing the hot dogs at him. You know, those are the things that people are going to remember. I could have went out there and did all the sweet moves possible and nobody would care, but, mm -hmm. you know, people are going to remember that I was a bully and I threw hot dogs on Keith Hott. 
<laughs> Speaking of those hot dogs, I, I, I think I informed you there at Meadville that uh, both times you brought hot dogs out, Tommy Dreamer has found them later in the night. And ate one. Yeah, once. that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> he ate one in January, I think, right? He ate one in January, and he did a Meadville as well. Okay. And I know, like, my guy was at ringside stepping on them and there stirring them into the ground. There are starving in China right now, <laughs> I guess Michael. So. And we were debating on whether he had the cupcake as well Dude. that he's, that that, that yeah. you guys were using. Yeah, I'm starving right now. All this talk about food, man. I haven't had a car <laughs> today. Killing me right now. <laughs> So what is it about uh, uh, IWC uh, that you've been having fun with uh, uh, so far? Do what? Uh, what is it about IWC you've been having fun with so far? I just love the atmosphere, man. It's it's uh, top to bottom a real professional company. It's not like going to another indie show, you know. I actually get excited about coming to IWC because there's a lot of good talent, you know. Everything's ran professionally. You know, it's a place that I can, you know, use as a platform to make a name for myself. Um, everything about it, man, is just, just true professionals. Awesome. See, that things have really turned around in uh, since December, haven't they? <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> there you go. No, uh, that's uh, that's good to hear. Uh, that's kind of a loaded question because he knows I'm sitting here with these headphones on. So. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Dylan was one of. You notice the rosters very different now than it was mm -hmm. uh, in December even. Mm -hmm. And part of that maybe was a little bit rushed on my part, but um, Dylan's one of the good that came out of that. I reached out and I tried to really bring in um, some new faces, some new personalities and love them or hate them. Uh, Dylan Bostic's an entertainer and he's done exactly that so far. And that's why he's earned his spot in a super neat qualifier and, no matter how he did it, he won. He's in the tournament, and and, mm -hmm. and he and he earned that spot. So guys like him and and Alex Daniels, Crimson, these are all guys that I wanted to bring in to bring a new identity to IWC. And um, I've been criticized for for turning over the roster too quickly, but guys like that make me proud of my decision and make me stand by my decision to do that and to change things up uh, to even improve them. I'd like to say going forward. Awesome, awesome. Uh, we, thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything to speak to that? I, I mean, I just really appreciate, you know, Plummer bringing me into IWC and giving me an opportunity, you know, because um, he didn't have to change everything that quickly. And, you know, he could have just made it the same as it always was. But, he, you know, he stuck his neck out on the line for me and, and brought me in and gave me a chance. We had a little bit of feedback here from our friend Alex Cars, who's out in, uh, I believe, uh, around Long Beach, California. Uh, he says, uh, no, actually, Seth Rollins aspires to be Dylan Bostic. So, putting that out there you for know, you. He, he might have a point. <laughs> <laughs> He's growing out that blonde streak, though. I, I think that's going away soon. So Yeah, he, uh, needs, to, he needs to cut his hair. You know, <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's a common, that's a common phrase goes around uh, uh, WWE training. I, I understand to cut your hair. So anyways, um, so going into it, uh, super indie here coming up. Uh, we just talked, got off uh, the line with uh, Ray Rowe, who's been, you know, of course, making waves down there in Texas, killing it. Uh, uh, Eamon here just witnessed that with Inspire Pro here over the weekend. Uh, well, what, well, first of all, he's one of your potential uh, uh, combatants you could see. Uh, coming up in Super India, um, uh, how do you, how do you feel about him as a possibility for an opponent across the ring? Do you have enough cupcakes? You know, for you know, I see, I see the bracket, and uh, if it works out, you know, it might end up coming down to me and him in the final. And that would really be a good opportunity for me because you know he's a big name in Ring of Honor. Now, if I can knock him off, maybe maybe I'll get a shot in Ring of Honor or something. But uh, you know, I'm just gonna take it match at match by match, you know, and just see where it, see where it leads me. First, I got him time. He, he won two Super Indy tournaments, so I got a big a big match right off the bat. Of course. So what, what do you think? Who else is uh, really sticking out to you that you would like to see, uh, perhaps one-on-one uh, -on -one or, or in the three-way finale uh, there at Super Indy with you? Uh, man, there's, a, the, like, top to bottom, it's just a lot of good talent. Um, of course, I, if I beat Hentai, then it looks like um, the fresh Andrew Palace. Coming yeah, in. fresh Andrew. That's Palace. actually an interesting yeah. bracket because you look at yeah. it, you can if break I, it down I win, into three, and I'll, he's I'll got the current hentai, champion. The wrestle, 
then I get to rent, I get to wrestle Andrew Palace, and he's the super indie champion. So if I can knock him off, you know that'll keep, you know, making me look better and better. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, Plumber, you're saying? No, I'm just. I, I don't know if you could pull up. I know not everyone's watching, but uh, the bracket there. But it, it's hard. You can you can almost segment it into three different brackets. Three mm-hmm. men are going to go into that final match, mm-hmm. and as always, the super indie champion has a bye. You could argue that that bottom bracket may be the most difficult. Uh, they may not be the biggest names currently, but it may be the most difficult. You have your reigning champion who's going to be fresh in that second round. Mm-hmm. And then you have Dylan. And, who, and, 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 and Pal's putting up great matches against guys like DJZ. He's been on fire. Yeah. 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 Beat yeah. Matt Striker, Striker last he beat year. Matt Striker last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Dylan will be, uh, you know, faced first off with a guy that, that won two Super Indies. And I was actually just with Hentai tonight mm-hmm. talking a little bit. I know he's fired up. I tried to talk him into coming out. But he has some business to take care of, and he didn't want to roam around in strangers' backyards. But uh, yeah. Oh, to... he's been down here a couple <laughs> times. He's very familiar with uh, roaming around in my strangers' backyards. So he would have gotten here quicker. Yeah, he would have. He'd be like, no, go first. We go to the neighbors, do a thing, and then we come over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nonetheless, uh, Bostic uh, would have to go through guys with experience in the Super Indie Division. Right. So while the names aren't there, I know a lot of people are looking in the in that middle bracket with uh, Trevor Lee. Uh, and uh, Everett. Andrew Everett, mm-hmm. the, you know, the top bracket's got Ray Rowe, which everybody's horrified mm-hmm. of. Yeah, Cedric like, Alexander yeah, the top up there. two are, are two ROH guys. So. But none of those guys have super indie experience. All that experience right, right. is down in that bottom bracket. So it's going to be interesting to see. Will the experience play out? Will the, will the speed will the speed play out? Will the high flyers come out on top? And then we got some bigger guys in there this year, too. So we mm-hmm. got a, a mix, a whole mix of styles this year in the tournament. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Certainly, certainly. And, and this is, is this the biggest bracket? I tried to make it that, and it's not. I didn't do my research. Norm Connors ran a two-day, he's out of his mind, 12-man Super Indy tournament. Yes. So I expanded the field this year uh, to make it 11. Mm-hmm. I never liked the 10. I never saw any reason to give anyone other than the champion a first-round bye. Why would you do that? Um, so I expanded it by one this year, thinking it would be the biggest. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Joe Dombrowski is always checking the stats. It is not the biggest, but it's the second biggest of all time. It's and most certainly the toughest. Because God forbid we do a two-day tournament again. Because yeah. <laughs> those, those always worked out so well. At least we got Necro Butcher in that one. But not in Super Indie, thankfully. Or maybe. I don't know. Could you imagine Super, Necro Butcher the Super Indie champion? I could imagine. Mean, RJ City just held the thing for, what, eight months, That's nine true. months. That's <laughs> true. That, that kind of changed the whole. And it, it, RJ's another guy, not to get off topic. 10 seconds or less here. Another guy that didn't fit the super indie mold. And I like that. I don't like him uh, professionally or personally, but he, he, he breaks the mold of the super indie title. He's not your mm-hmm. uh, luchador. And that title actually main evented more shows in the world title last year. That's what makes this tournament so important because the super indie championship is almost, if not, you could say it's on par with the IWC heavyweight championship. Right mm-hmm. now. I can, you could probably say that more people mm-hmm. held the, that are popular have gone on have held the super indie title maybe than the heavyweight oh for sure absolutely absolutely if you're looking at who's held a title and then from there used it as a launching pad to go to the next level mm-hmm. ring of honor wwe ecw wcw um you can just go into iwcwrestling.com look at the title history tab um, you'll see a ton of huge names in there a ton certainly certainly is that what's that dylan you saying something yeah, I was going to say, actually, I was doing my research um, yesterday, and I was looking at all the past champions and stuff, and I noticed that the Super Indy title, I would say, is more prestigious. Yeah, a lot of people think that. It's 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 all it, it's all in how you perceive it. Uh, uh, the Super Indy title has, I don't know if you want to say made stars, but you could say stars have used the Super Indy title to help achieve their success along their way to the top. And that's what hopefully we're going to continue the tradition with, uh, whichever of these 11 men. And it's not even necessarily the winners of Super Indy. It's participants. We've had guys go out in the first round. We've had guys at Super Indy that weren't in the tournament that just had to be part of, happened to be part of the event. I know my first Super Indy, um, my first backstage interview now that Brittany Baker does was with Cesaro. Uh, I mean, this is, and then I, who else was in that one? Uh, uh, El Generico was in that Super Indy. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I don't have anything in front of me here, but but it's it, it has been a breeding ground for future television stars. 
Certainly, certainly. And it will be again this year. I mean, and that's the thing about it. If you want to see these guys before you have to pay $300 a, a seat to sit in the front row to see them, <laughs> Super Indy is the place to come because in two years, three years, you look at that bracket. I, I, I guarantee you, at least at least one or two of those names is going to be on your television mm -hmm. on a weekly basis. Uh, I promise that. Point out, you mentioned El Generico, who resembles somebody in uh, NXT right now. Right. Uh, he he's the first round match. He was taking on a guy that was in the elimination chamber in uh, now known as Callisto. Yeah, Samurai, then, then right. Samurai Del Sol. Uh, that I mean, I, I love I love watching WWE and say, "Yep, that's one of our IWC guys. That's one of our IWC guys. Yep, that's all him. Yep." That and ninety percent of the time, and, it stems from Super Indie. It stems right, from that. Right. It stems from this tournament that's going to happen. And in even two weeks. even lately, you know, we're talking with you know Dylan. We mentioned your your tough enough spot, but how many people I love watching my TV on Raw and how many of the guys we're working with now with IWC especially. I don't see a lot of people from other groups even kind of extensionally. You yeah, know, around. I, I like, think like, just like, about all of our guys have made it on either SmackDown, Raw, mm -hmm. whatever, the front page of the website. I've seen, I think we have four, four or five guys uh, mm -hmm. that have applied and they've all been, they've all been featured. So we're doing something right here. In That's Pittsburgh. right. All right, Dylan, uh, anything else about Super Indy uh, going into this? Uh, uh, anything else you, anything else you want to say about what's coming up with that show? Are, are there any food items going to be involved? Anything planned? Can't. Can, can, well, uh, you know, you, you're talking about all the different styles, and there's a lot of big guys and, mm -hmm. and high flyers and all these different styles. You know, my mindset is, you know, going into each match, I'm going to do my style, and that's, you know, play mind games. I'll take my time, and I'll do whatever I've got to do to win the match. You know, these guys are going to be worried about getting all their things in and, like, making sure the crowd loves them, but I don't really care. All I care about is winning. That's right. That's right. Uh, so uh, let's let's end us off with a couple of questions here uh, that we usually put out there. We just uh, uh, put them out to Ray Rowe. First of all, what are you watching as far as wrestling these days? Uh, you know, I like to do a lot of research, uh, like Macho Man, Randy Savage, um, a lot of Hustler, Rip Rogers matches, you know, since he trained me. Um, I watch a lot of old stuff. I don't really watch too much new stuff. Okay, and uh, what's the best and worst? You've been here. Uh, you said mentioned you've been around for eight years. Uh, what's the best and worst of indie wrestling so far for you? Um, the best part about it is all the stories, all the people that I meet, and like all the the situations that I go in. And some of them might not be so fun at the time, but later on, I get to laugh about it. You know, a lot of stories and and just all the people that I've met. Um, the worst part about it is though, I feel like indie wrestlers don't get the respect they deserve kind of uh you know how how rose said earlier you know there's all these guys that say they're wrestlers and act like they're wrestlers and think they're wrestlers but they're not mm -hmm. you know and and i think i think people get that stuck in their mind because they go to a bad show once and then they have a bad taste about independent wrestling mm -hmm. and then they never want to go again but then you know there's guys on top too that really didn't earn a spot and shouldn't be there and I feel like there's so much talent on the indies that indies should have more respect than they really do. I would say that that's probably the worst thing about it. All right. So if anybody wants to, well, first of all, everybody go to uh, Super Indie, IWCWrestling.com, June 13th coming up here. If you're not in the area, it'll be on DVD, digital download through PittsburghWrestling.com and the soon to be relaunched indie wrestling .us. uh but uh where can people find you and perhaps become one of the uh 180 000 plus followers of your twitter account well um actually my website platinumworldtour.com there's a, a social media page on there where you can find all my social media pages um but my twitter is my main social media source obviously um and it's at dylan underscore bostic and also, if you're on my website, make sure you go to ProWrestlingTees.com and, and buy my shirts. That's right. Throw a, throw a Wrestling Mayhem Show shirt in there while you're at it, if you could. Uh, but uh, and all, a, lot of, and a lot of friends, a lot of familiar faces actually popped up on there. But uh, hit up Dylan for sure. Uh, and that's uh, PlatinumWorldTour.com. Not too many uh, uh, indie wrestlers have their own website these days. Yeah, man. Uh, actually, that was another thing that I did this year uh, to stand out. Um, did a really professional photo shoot. Um, had a professional web designer do my website and actually tomorrow morning I have another photo shoot uh, for some new 
new things that are going to be going up onto the website. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Nice. Thanks a lot, Dylan Bostic. Check him out in the tournament. Check him out online, and uh, and vote for him on Tough Enough. Go go hit play on that video on Tough Enough and show him uh, uh, to maybe consider him for the show. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna Thanks, hold guys. there. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks again to both uh, Dylan Bostic and Ray Rowe. Fantastic interviews. Uh, definitely look out for them uh, in the Super Indie Tournament coming up. Uh, uh, we're going to talk a bit more to Justin Plummer in a second uh, about some of the other stuff happening in IWC, but. Uh, to sort of uh, also mention, uh, uh, obviously we had Ray Rowe on and, and aforementioned, uh, uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling had an event uh, this past weekend that I do want to quickly mention, our In Their Blood 2 event. Uh, huge event for us. Uh, obviously we were going to get some stiff competition with the Elimination Chamber uh, and some stiffer competition <laughs> and, with the Texas weather. And Mother <laughs> Nature, holy crap. And Mother Nature. Yeah. Um, luckily everything kind of died down after Friday, which was very lucky. Uh, Mother Nature loved professional wrestling, apparently. Um but yeah, it was a fantastic event. It was a really star-studded lineup, uh, you know, bringing in talents like Ricochet, uh, who had a phenomenal uh, four-way match with uh, uh, three guys, uh, Steve Arino, Jigolo Jim Johnson, who we've had on before. And another wrestler who I think a lot of people need to start keeping their eyes on now is a, a guy who debuted for us named Donovan Donhausen, uh, who was absolutely fantastic. He actually trained originally under uh, Truth Martini, and uh, Jimmy Jacobs, nice. and uh, he is absolutely fantastic, and uh, hopefully we'll be seeing him in Inspire Pro a lot more often because he really made an impression for himself uh, his first time in Texas and, and in, in uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, we had that. We had the crowning of our first ever XX Division champion, uh, which is our women's champion. Uh, surprisingly enough, someone who wasn't supposed to be in our tournament finals. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Delilah Doom got injured. Oh, no. Uh, by by one Angelus Lane, uh, unfortunately, uh, dislocating her shoulder with a steel chair, which was not nice. Uh, uh, but Beta Scott of uh, Ring of Honor fame, of Destination America Ring of Honor fame, uh, just happened to be there in Austin, Texas, funny enough, uh, and inserted herself in the match and won our XX Division Championship. Uh, so very interesting turn of events. Uh, she... You know, uh, uh, immediately ran out the door. However, she uh, it was announced that she will be forced to uh, defend her belt at our next show, June twenty first, Clash of the Bats two against Leva Bates. So that will be a really fun match. Nice. Uh, also, uh, Ray Rowe, who we talked to, will be facing the American Psycho Land American Psycho Lance Hoyt, who I had the pleasure of doing commentary with this show. Oh, geez. Now, uh, now Lance has been uh, in a kind of a a, uh, a war of words with uh, uh, one Brandon Stroud, your ring announcer. Uh, how he did, has been. How did you fare, or was he just a puppy dog next to you? Oh, he was delightful. <laughs> he was delightful, and it was was just a gentleman. Uh, uh, I do apologize to the fans of Inspire for Wrestling for ha- for uh, obliging Lance Hoyt's demands that I give him the hammer for the ring bell, uh, because he pr- proceeded to pound on that incessantly <laughs> to the point where Brandon Sharp could not make match announcements. <laughs> And I, I deeply apologize for that. Um, it was, uh, it was interesting. It was, it was, it was something. <laughs> no, I, I loved it, Lance. Don't kill me. Um, but yeah, uh, he will be wrestling on that event as well. Uh, we also got tons of really cool stuff coming up, and then the main event will be uh, Dirty Andy Dalton defending the Inspire Pro Championship against Just Steve Arena, and that's going to be a much anticipated matchup, uh, to say the least. Uh, tickets are already on sale for that event over at inspireprowrestling.com and uh, it's less than three weeks away so there's no big break like we had last time mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to be because of that we're going to be rolling out match announcements in the coming days uh, so really cool stuff coming from Inspire Pro awesome uh, and I thank you Wheels for reminding me uh, this weekend I'm going to be at a show uh, RWA is going to have uh, Unleashed which is going to one is uh, if you get the DVD there will be a very familiar voice if you're a, a fan of these podcasts look for tweets and such about that uh, on that one that's going to be tried out that night uh, but there you have a Falls Count Anywhere Fans Bring the Weapons match and we've talked about these fans in the RWA before uh, but that's be- between friend of the show G Raver and Akuma of the For- Forbidden Warriors it sounds as mystical as it is as mystical as it sounds, uh, but not the fans there. Uh, but uh, aside from that, I believe Tracy Smothers also a part of that show. Uh, some women's wrestling action. Sanjay Dutt will be there defending the Cruiserweight uh, Championship. Tremendous match he had uh, with uh, Shane Andrews last month at No Retreat, which was also an 
insane show. I, I finally got to edit that last week, and it was just absolute, absolute insanity. Also, real quick note, uh, uh, fond farewell. I'm sorry I missed the last show. Church, who has been on uh, this show before, uh, had to leave. He has never missed a, a show since the beginning of that promotion and had to leave due to uh, work complications. And um, and uh, so it'll be it'll, it'll be hard to replace down definitely down there. Uh, so hard to see, uh, you know, uh, sad to see that happen. So uh, check out more information about that R- rwalive.com and hopefully you can find a minute to mention how that went after uh, after next week. So uh, so Plummer, he's Yo. still here. He's still hanging out. He did not wander into the neighbor's uh, uh, backyards again. But uh, <laughs> I'm trying to follow Justin Bieber on Twitter so that I get up to 80,000 <laughs> by the end of this. There you go. So just give me a minute, Justin. I love you. Send. <laughs> Okay, what's up? I, what, what is up? Um, I was going to say, you could have included at Mayhem Show and get some of those followers our way, Yeah, too. you know, I mean... <laughs> you okay over there? I just... Uh, Justin Bieber. Oof. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I had a question, but uh, that just made me lose it. Oh, I, you know, I, I, I did have a question. So so we had Ray Rowe on, and he's, of course, involved in this... We're going to talk about here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show about this insane Wednesday night war four promotions on and so a good question now would be what are you watching lately uh, outside of the iwc of course you're you're scouting talent you're seeing what's out there uh survivor but that just ended the season finale was okay, last okay. wednesday uh rupaul's drag race is no just ending as well, no I, so I don't no, know that, not one. that one okay um big brother's coming up okay uh what else do i watch um my kids i watch my kids a lot <laughs> keep, keep very busy uh wrestling wise I try. I I have raw on in the background, mm-hmm. but there's not much watching, and usually it's not till the till the end of the show. Um, but yeah, raw. I watch raw. That's mm-hmm. it. Is that exciting enough? No, <laughs> no that's great. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to. I haven't even watched. <laughs> no, but I with this with this whole Wednesday thing coming up, it's like it's even excited me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just I'm so exhausted at night half the time. This is I'm up three hours past my bedtime right now. Thankfully, Texas thankfully, nothing's nothing, thankfully nothing's live, so it's okay if you don't watch it on Wednesday night, right? You know, you can just <laughs> kind of sprinkle it through the rest of the week, when right? Did they, is there? Yeah, I guess that's what DVR is for. No, uh, it, it will be entertaining. I'm, I'm definitely going to tune in at first, kind of like when TNA tried to run against WWE, and it's like, oh crap, we have Hogan versus Flair here, but wait, Brett's coming back over here, and yeah, it yeah, was exciting yeah, yeah, yeah. for a night. So hopefully this will be exciting for more than a night, and with talent crossing over a little bit and all mm-hmm. that stuff, um, I'll definitely uh, I'll be watching. And it's also going to be a great night to tweet about the IWC because you know all the you indie know, fans will be uh, I on was, their twitters. I was showing uh, somebody had apparently posted that IWC match. Of, it was a three way of uh, Ray Rowe and Cleveland Mafia against the Burning River Brigade which included Matt Cross and, of course, or the Gambinos. Mm-hmm. And it was actually tagged as Ray Rowe, ROH, Matt Cross, Lucha Underground. So there's yeah. like there's like an IWC alumni on every program on Wednesday night. It's incredible. I was thinking about that on the way over here and over mm-hmm. the last couple of days as to whether or not mainly the NXT movement, uh-huh. but all of this that's happening right now is good or bad. Um, I. And, you know, did I get into this business at an opportune time or did I get in at a, at a time where it's going to get more difficult? But but it's also interesting because like when when I started coming to IWC, we were getting Ring of Honor guys, TNA guys. And now we're back at this level where they're still accessible. Obviously, they're on the show, but from representing both companies and even the Lucha Underground people. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and and. Maybe I'm, strangely, somehow Samoa Joe's out there, or a Rhino you just had on NXT. So is it is it like kind of you're meeting this kind of new acceptance and this new accessibility to people that are on TV getting exposure and still being able to come and help IWC? It could get be. Propped it's up? it's something I talked to Norm Connors about back in December, probably or November, mm-hmm. and it was a lot different back when he ran the company because oh, yeah. there was ECW and there this was before there all was the... Even, he was working with Adam Baum when he was in WWF. Yeah, there, there weren't the restrictions that there no, are now. No, And that's why I think ultimately, yes, you may lose some talent more quickly than you typically would because there's more big-time spots to fill, but uh, at the same time, I don't think they're going to be unaccessible. Uh and I think the guys that are already with us will remain loyal to us and come back when they can. At least I can only hope. 
But I do think overall, while it, it is kind of scary thinking, oh my God, there's, you know, now there's Ring of Honor and it's going to be on national TV. TNA is going to be putting up a fight. NXT is now taking roster spots and they're going to be, they got to take people from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we have a history of having people taken from us. So it gets you nervous. But at the same <laughs> sometimes time, sometimes just ideas, but sometimes whole people. <laughs> sometimes they do take whole people. And they get whole new names. Or and... that, that's, that's the level that IWC's at. And it's, that's, it, you know, it's great to be at that the top of the area's indie scene or even the whole region but at the same time you're at risk people are can be gone like that mm -hmm. and so you always got to have a backup plan there's not many guys that stick around for a long time mm -hmm. uh, luckily we've had guys that we've been able to keep uh, or guys that come back and guys that come back mm -hmm. but uh but overall i think this is going to be good i do I, I i was thinking about that yesterday i was thinking about it on the way here uh i i think that this is going to be good exposure for, for all of the indies. Mm -hmm. And I think people are now seeing that Monday Night Raw, that you can't sit for three hours through if you're like me, mm -hmm. and you can only make an hour and a half, that's not the only option out there. Right. There's other styles of wrestling. There's other alternatives. And maybe they see one of these s smaller, less produced promotions, mm -hmm. uh, even if it is an NXT, on television, and they then are are motivated to go out and check out mm -hmm. their local promotion. The 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 you know the smart promotion that will know how to capitalize on that will, much like I think IWC has storied over over years and years mm -hmm. and years. Yep. Um, uh, on both sides of that, so awesome. I mean, remember this is a promotion where we had Samoa Joe against Ray Rowe was like a crazy money match for IWC. I don't know money, but, but, but to a fan, you know, it was a pretty mind-blowing match way back when that happened before he went to Texas and got more tattoos and a beard and, and scarier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, he was scary enough back then. And now look, at Samoa Joe's on freaking NXT and somehow still on Ring of Honor the same week. But anyway. Well, I can't say anything right now, but we're going to be making a few more strong pushes. Mm -hmm. I Tried to crank it up a notch this year mm -hmm. uh, with the level of talent that we were bringing in, mm -hmm. and we're not done yet with the at the IWC. Well, I'm glad I'm so. glad you can uh, I'm glad you can subsidize Tommy Dreamer's pay with uh, the hot dogs he finds under the ring after Dylan's <laughs> matches. That's one thing I've learned from wrestling this year under your uh, under your promotion. Uh. <laughs> Eat anything. The key is this: the key is to come out and support indie wrestling because. Right. The only way we can keep bringing in the people that you want to see that are on TV that you get to see up close and meet and get their autographs and have conversations mm -hmm. with them is if you come out and support and watch. Um, and that's really it, – it's a cycle then. And then it can snowball because right. then once right. – Look at what's happened with Inspire we talked about earlier yep. in Texas. They're doing a, a tremendous thing, great talent, guys like Rowe and ACH hanging out there. And uh, they're standing room only, literally quite, you know, quite literally standing room only. And poor Eamon's getting threatened by Lance Hoyt and, and all that kind of stuff, you know. I mean, we get Mark Madden, you know, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Anyways, on that note, Justin Plummer. Plummer loves you on the Twitters, IWCWrestling.com. Hey, who are you? Now, you, I, I got to give all credit to the Plummer. Plummer came to me on Facebook and said, let's do this thing. Who, let's who, go who do we got from the bracket and and you came up with the names you made this happen you made the connections i appreciate it thank you very much absolutely and i hope this helps uh people get interested in super indie uh it's been something i'm i'm, an, I'm a fan first even where i am helping with iwc i'm a fan first we all are this. we all are that's i was giving my opinions as a fan before the show <laughs> of what i thought was going to happen with one of the guys not based on any conversations i have on facebook which just ends up in dirty pictures anyways but anyways <laughs> but 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 we have special stuff next week too special guest next week yes i helped you out yes. right a little bit yes uh, who's going to be the first up? Who's the nine o'clock? I believe guest? the nine o'clock is Cedric Alexander, another Ring of Honor, another talent, Ring of Honor guy. That, and this is we scheduled this before the Destination America. Yeah, see, we <laughs> I've gotten so lucky this year. Rhino, hey, we're gonna have Rhino. Oh, he's on NXT. Hey, what? We're gonna have Nash. He's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> no, we haven't been lucky. I know. Um, and then and then a guy that I I've never met personally but I've grown to love over these last few weeks just chatting with him mm -hmm. Sugar Dunkerton is going to mm -hmm. be joining us. And I understand uh, it very different than what I'm familiar with in, in Chikara. Very different and he's and he wants you to know it. <laughs> I don't know. There's a video. He's like does he have heat with our webmaster is that Oh, <laughs> Jesse happened? the Mark is in trouble using old footage. No. Oh, he, we'll have to talk no. about that. He it was uh 
Shug D. That's that's how we go now. Shug. He uh, it call, was all tongue in cheek. He he he's fine with it. Did he call you Justin P. He calls it yeah, Justin P. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Sweet Jeez. like T. Uh, oh, he, oh man. He he was he's just he's he's just teasing Jesse. But yeah, he wants to break. He broke out in Shakara, and he has, and this is why I'm excited to see him in the tournament because he has a chip on his shoulder because he's been wrestling for years since then, and mm-hmm. he feels like he hasn't gotten the recognition that he deserves since he was this cartoon character in Shakara. Yeah, and he's told me that, and yeah. he's been sending out he's been sending out videos. I'm not telling him, hey, cut a promo, do this. He's sending out videos with his true feelings. He's coming to win this thing, and he's at least coming to make an impression. So um, he's very. I don't want to say controversial because there's no, there's no, there's not a uh, angry bone in his body. He's not vengeful, but he's very driven. I think is the word, and he's very excited to be coming up to Pittsburgh to participate in this tournament. And that's why I wanted to really get him on uh, this show and as many shows as and, I can. And, and 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 both these guys next week they are first round. Opponents. opponents i yeah well that's the luck of the draw that is that is that's how the time worked out i didn't know that at the time when we were yeah when we were getting these guys but it turns out that they're uh yeah it's awesome Go so maybe we'll have a five minute crossover maybe we'll we've done that <laughs> once before on this show and it came, when, came out fantastic <laughs> with somebody who might have his own show on the network now and somebody who might have won brawl for all uh anyways uh but uh wow the people we've had on this show. That is Everybody. Yeah, then I could say that, you know. God, just imagine, <laughs> like, two years from right now, you're like, Justin Plummer sat on my couch and refused to eat my pizza. Mm. <laughs> mm. Here I am. Enjoy it while it lasts. There you go. I'm going to be on Survivor. And- He's going to be the Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the first one uh, to make hey, fire. Will says hi in the chat room and says, are you a fan of Big Brother? I love Big Brother. I love Big Brother. My only dream bigger than owning my own wrestling company is to be on Big Brother. because like, I'm <laughs> positive I would win it. I'm Jeez. positive I would. I there would. better not be a big brother angle. And I'm not in good enough shape anymore. If I could have done it when I was like 26, 27, 28, but yeah, now I'm yeah, at 30. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a dad of two. And it's just like, uh, it's just hard, you know, to get to the gym. You can't go to the gym five days a week anymore. Although dad bods are in. So dad if anyone in, out there, true. I'm willing to book Jesse Goddard's just so he can help me film my application video for big brother. Jeez. So I got to talk to Shima about that. <laughs> On that note, thank you, Justin Plummer, IWCWrestling.com, Eamon, over at Inspire Pro... What what is your website? InspireProWrestling.com. InspireProWrestling.com, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's the ticket. Add Eamon to please. And uh, check out everything, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Join us in the chat room. We'll be here again, special time, 9 p.m. Eastern time, followed by the Wrestling Mayhem Show immediately after, whenever we get to that. Um, And uh, uh, join us on the Facebooks and all that stuff, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Wrestling Mayhem Show everywhere else. And look for Indie Mayhem Show on the iTunes, on the YouTubes, on the Daily Motions sometimes, uh, on uh, uh, all the audio things. There's links at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. X Video. X Video, Pornhub. (laughs) Uh, I, I should just upload it to it and see what happens. Exactly. I'd watch it. <laughs> I, there you go. There you go. You know, I sure. You know, new audiences. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, we'll get it. Like, if like, you would have put Ray Lynn on this couch, like I asked you to, maybe you could have got some more views. But don't listen to me. Hey, I don't know what we're I'm just talking gonna about. hold that card for later. All right. When we maybe have a women's match again one day right that's right right it's coming that, soon oh yeah that's a good so women's wrestling is coming in iwc that already has clearfield Wait, did it yeah <laughs> I can't remember. marty bell angel dust that's and right it will that's be right. back it will but be it back. Will, will it be back uh, uh, I'm, I'm hitting you a hard question here uh, is it gonna be so you back? keep on the end of the show but it's just too good is it gonna be is it gonna be back more than just in a special capacity at the at the b shows that's we'll see it's up to it's up to the ladies themselves. I would like to see it back. Mm-hmm. I would like to see it back full time. Good to hear. Good um, to hear. It's tough because there's limited spots. Right. And we're already losing people because we just can't use everybody. Right, right, right. But uh, the, that's been the plan that by the end of this year, we have a full time. As is Marty division. Bell. Marty Bell, TNA now. So. Yeah, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, check out all this stuff. Uh, support indie wrestling wherever you may be. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut with a taste of the fly. Sing, sing, sing. You know how I act now. When you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Wow. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.